Whoa, it's rather lovely, isn't it? That's our Callistamon, um, the bottle brush plant, and I wanted to just um, take you through some of the benefits and some tips on how to grow that here in the quite cool climate in the UK and South Wales. But before that, let's go for a quick 30-second um, tour of our summer garden, starting now. <laughs> So, ladies and gentlemen, the uh, the yucca flower spike is getting taller and taller. Uh, not quite in flower yet, but it's looking lovely. The, the leaves are looking lovely. And look at that Alstomeria, ladies and gentlemen. That's one called in Indian Summer. Makes a lovely cut flower. Gorgeous. Um, whoa, the lilies, the lilies are about to come into flower. They're not quite there. Look, that one there is just starting to open. Ooh. Often overlooked this lovely little pink pink lichness here um there's some little insects on there as well ah oh, there's lovely um the figs down there oh the figs are almost ready but look at that fuchsia that's a hardy fuchsia it's been there for about 10 years full of flower buds i think that's mrs popple if you know different let me know and now let's get back to the bottle brush So, oh, look at that, there's a little um, little hoverfly there, um, hovering around as they do. Um, so this, uh, I think, is Callistamon rigidus. There's a number of bottle brush varieties that you'll find available in the garden centres and the nurseries. This, I find, is the hardiest. You may disagree, but um, I work on the theory, well, not just a theory, the experience that um, on these slightly tender shrubs, and this is a shrub that comes from uh, Australia, I believe. Um, so here in the UK, um, it could get affected by cold weather. But the smaller the leaf, I find the hardier, often anyway, often the hardier the, the variety is um, on, on several of the tender shrubs. Uh, but on this, um, on the Callistamons, on the bottle, bottle brushes, um, this one here, Callistamon rigidus, um, has a slightly smaller leaf. And this bad boy has been here for well, almost 20 years, and it's had some serious um, cold temperatures on it. Um, uh, according to some of the sites, uh, websites and things, you know, minus five is as much as it can take, but it's had, it's had colder than minus five on there. If it was really, really cold, I wouldn't be surprised if some of the soft growth um, got, um, got frosted back, um, but there's so much old, tough wood down there. You know, we could actually cut this right back in spring to kind of half its size into that old wood and you can see that you can you can see that they just send out shoots from from lower down that that's what they do so once you've got it my experience is once you've had it for a few years particularly this variety um, it can take some pretty serious cold weather I might be tempting fate here and we get a really 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 cold winter this next winter and I have to wave goodbye to it um, so you will find other varieties. You'll find some, um, there's a yellow variety. I saw a white variety um, not so long ago down on the south coast, uh, which looked particularly tender. I've seen pictures of pink varieties, um, but um, this one, this kind of vivid uh, red, look at that, that's kind of in the shade there. But if you just go, go back around the corner here, look at that, it must be about, I suppose it's spreading out about best part of three meters you know eight nine foot um uh, across there and it's about seven foot that's uh, two meters plus uh high um that's a that's our yucca uh, yucca gloriosa flower they're just starting to um to go over um it does like a well-drained and that's this might be one one of the reasons why uh, it's done okay here in our garden in cold weather in, because it's in a very well-drained kind of sloping part of the garden there. Um, any of these tender plants, let's just zoom in close to this one here. Yeah, any of these tender plants um, will cope with cold weather better if they're in a well-drained, uh, slightly dryish soil. Um, if we get a really, really cold spell and the soil is soaking wet, then they will really really suffer so this one just seems to thrive in the position we've got it in it's kind of sheltered um, because it's got this hardy palm uh, whoa, look at that tricky carpus um, got this hardy palm providing some shelter we've got a, a bamboo hedge 
just the other side there, which is providing some shelter. Um, and it, anyway, for whatever, and there's a yucca just behind providing some shelter. Uh, so it's fairly sheltered, but I have to say, um, when we, we get some, some storms from, from the west, that, that over there, you can see where the sun is setting um, on this beautiful summer's evening. Uh, it does get exposed to some of the, the kind of the wet winter winds, but the cold winds come from that direction and it's got a lot more in the way of plants to protect it. So maybe that's also part of the, um, part of the answer. So I commend to you this beautiful shrub, the, uh, the bottle brush. If you want something exotic looking, um, something to give you some summer color, some gracefully arching branches. You know, sometimes I think I could be a poet. Um, uh, it's, apparently it's, it's in, the, um, in the myrtle family. So if you take a leaf and crush it, have a, have a sniff. Could you smell it? Uh, okay, well, it's not that strong to work over the internet, but it has got a kind of myrtly kind of um, smell to the um, to the leaf. But I just love it for those evergreen kind of arching branches and these vivid red, pinky red flowers in the summer. That, ladies and gentlemen, is the bottle brush. Thank you and good night.